Okay, here we are. Uh, we've got the uh, the mass done, or the, the, the structure itself, uh, the cross beams, whatever you want to call them, the arms, all done. Again, once it uh, realise the confusion in the actual plans, it's all run pretty smoothly. Uh, what I've actually found is when you do your measurements, you'll see that. Uh, sorry, dog. Uh, you'll actually see that um, all of the screws where he's got joining uh, parts are all 95 mil apart. Um, so what I've actually did, rather than uh, as following the plans and actually drilling, um, you know, 95 here. Uh, and then 95 in the in the tube that's going to slot in and then trying to match up the holes basically what you do is just uh, drill out the, the furthest hole um, depending on which end you're doing just drill out this hole here drill out the matching hole underneath um, put it in line it up and uh, put a screw in it then go up and then just drill through here about 95 away I uh, had it marked up drill it in put the screw in um, rather than trying to match up the two lots of holes just makes things a little bit simpler uh, but you can get an idea, uh, this is a centerpiece here that'll actually go onto the mast. Uh, left and right are obviously uh, identical in each direction. So you can see it goes to a thicker piece, um, then a thinner piece on the end. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, now all the screws have gone in the one side as you can see, uh, up there, there they are there. Uh, and on the top, and what I'm actually finding is because the diameter uh, of this one here, not sure if you can see that, is leaving a slight gap uh, underneath uh, where the screws pulled that right up to the top. What I'm actually finding is this: the, if I keep the screws at the top like that, um, it's actually causing it to uh, to bend down. So what I actually do is flip those over, have all the screws at the bottom it's actually uh, making the ends point up a little bit which is going to be good because obviously there's going to be a little bit of weight on those once I've added the wire etc. Um, having a bit of trouble with the uh, with the actual making up the brackets um, even though I live in the Newcastle area here in Australia um, which is uh, you know, known for its um, metal production um, trying to go and find um, six and a half mil aluminium plate is uh, proven to be a real challenge um, I looked at using hardened steel uh, which you'll see is over there on the floor uh, the reason it's on the floor because it was unsuccessful I haven't got a drill bit that's actually going to go through that um, that's probably about the right um, thickness but obviously hardened steel and some of the cheap shit drill bits that I've got just aren't being effective so I grabbed some of this stuff um, which is it was in the carpentry section um, over at Bunnings um, diamond is not really thick but it, I think it doesn't really need to be to, to make the support so what I actually did was bought half a dozen of these um, obviously for stuff up and whatnot because uh, I figured that was going to happen at this part this is a bit I was going to find the most challenging um, they're pre-drilled um, they're for putting into timber and um, joining timber or something along those lines with nail holes um, what I've actually found is I can actually uh, drill the bits, drill the holes through them uh, line them up and match them up and drill the bits through them now because I'm not um, not perfect with my drilling and, and this is uh, anyway what I'm actually finding is that um, I can get those matched up, you know, occasionally where I'm a little bit out, what I've actually got to do, you know, you put the drill in, you wiggle it side to side to open up the hole a little bit. Um, but what I'm finding is, again, even just the cheap drills and, and the, the thickness of this, um, just not managing to get through it correctly. So what I'm going to do is just duck down to the hardware store and uh, hand over some hard earned and get a decent drill bit uh, so I can come back, bang a few holes through this. Um, what I'm actually going to do is rather than just going with a single plate I'm actually going to double thickness it probably drill a few small holes well, I've actually got some uh, some small nuts and bolts very tiny uh, using on PCs and stuff that should go through those holes uh, and lock those into place and then I can just drill and uh, 
you know, I'll do one, make sure I get it right, then I'll use it as a template, just draw straight through the other one. Anyway, that's the plan at this point. Uh, all appears to be going well. Have all the wires cut. Uh, as you can see there, there's the mask with the junction box. Um, there's a Yagi. I'm actually in the process of building. Uh, you can see it's quite thick mask. It's actually going to be for satellite stuff. Um, I need to uh, drill the UHF um, or the 70 centimeter hole through that um, and uh, yeah, get that done basically and, and figure some way to mount that. I'm thinking I'm going to mount it on a decent sized tripod or something like that for uh, ease of. Um, movement uh, and you can actually see I've still got some uh, some aluminium rod up there uh, which is actually uh, they come in four meter lengths um, I also uh, I have seen some plans for these cobwebs which are um, using fiberglass for the end parts uh, but I'm actually resisting pulling all the uh, fishing rods apart and <laughs> turn those into a, into a cobweb. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, hopefully I'll talk to you soon. I'll have the brackets made up, uh, have the beams that are cross laid out and uh, be looking at getting the measurements and getting the wires attached to those and uh, we'll be on the home stretch. Okay.